Hello, everyone. Welcome to a Wall Street for May Tree podcast special. And today's special guest is Greg Hunter. Greg is the producer and creator of the USAWatchdog.com. He spent nearly nine years as a network and investigative correspondent. He worked for ABC News, Good Morning America, and also on CNN. Greg, thank you for joining us. It's good to be here. All right. I want to go into your background and talk about uh, your career in the mainstream media industry. And you, that's what you were doing before we started the USA Watchdog. That's correct. And tell us, why why did you leave uh, CNN and the mainstream media industry and started your own news channel? Is there a specific event or, to, or something well, that I'll happened? Give that, the, I'll give you quit? the real story. And the real story was I, I, uh, I was an investigative reporter for ABC and CNN to, separately at two different times, you know, five and a half years at Good Morning America and nearly three years at CNN. So, you know, I was there and I started doing the economy. And, I, and the reason why I did the economy, I mean, Ali Vell, she was, a, of course, was a anchor there. He's now to Al Jazeera. Uh, actually, I actually have more video views than Al Jazeera. Anyway, they got a, a hell of a lot bigger budget. But, um, you know, I started talking about the economy. It just didn't make sense. I mean, just, you know, that, that, that the sub, remember the subprime crisis? Remember they told us Bernanke was out there, oh, it's going to be contained. I'm uh, contained? What do you mean it's going to be contained? And I started sourcing. It wasn't just me. I started sourcing people saying, oh, no, 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 it's not going to be contained. It's going to, it's going to affect the entire, you know, a stratification of uh, real estate from the top to bottom, from commercial to residential. Bing! My source was correct. Bernanke was not correct. It was not contained. And then they started having me, I started just, I just thought it was very interesting that they were having debates in 2007 whether or not we were in a recession. And I said, well, you can't knock out housing and, and you can't knock out autos. I mean, autos, autos and housing were, were imploding and the banks were in deep trouble. And I was on, and it's on my site, USA Watchdog, under the About section. And you'll see where I was warning uh, yeah, at the end of the thing it was my reoccurring theme. I was saying all the banks are in trouble. And people, and this, is, this is before Lehman. And people looked at me like I had two heads. I mean, oh, come on, oh, all the banks are in trouble. Yeah, all, my sources say all their banks are in trouble. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, they were, weren't they? TARP and, and, they, and now the Fed has, a, you know, a, approaching $4 trillion or so 3 or $4 trillion in al- assets on their balance sheet from buying toxic mortgages, which were supposed to be equal to a treasury, right? What a fraud that is. You know, we give the banks of the eight, 75 billion a month. Actually, it's more. It's way more than that, according to my sources. But I'll just take them at their word. Seven trillion dollars a year, roughly, almost a trillion now is what they they say they're going to do. We'll see how it goes in the next few months as the economy slows down. But you know, 75. Well, they're giving 35 billion a month to the banks, and yeah, they're still propping the banks up. I mean, there's trillions and trillions of dollars in TARP and zero percent interest rates and phony accounting at, at FASB since April of 2009. You can value your assets at anything you want. Nothing's fixed. Nothing's fixed. And so I, w- I was back in the day talking about how the uh, the banks were in trouble and the economy was in a recession. It was you can't knock out the banks, autos, and housing and not be in a recession. I mean, that's a three-legged stool. You got no legs. So, uh, and plus we shipped away all of our manufacturing jobs. I don't even mention that because we don't manufacture that. Although that's coming back. The good news is that some of that is coming back. At any rate, um, the long and short of it was I was uh, basically blowing the whistle and getting good numbers, by the way. Um, And uh, they decided not to renew my contract at CNN. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I actually had one of the senior, the guy running the New York News Bureau, uh, who was, uh, you know, running the entire New York News Bureau, stops me in a hall and says, I can't believe all the people we could get rid of. We're getting rid of you. Well, the reason why is they, you know, I didn't get the memo. I was supposed to act surprised that, you know, things were imploding. And, you know, uh, the mainstream media acted, they actually did stories after the thing imploded and said, wow, nobody saw that coming. That's a complete lie. That's a complete lie. And a lot of people were, a lot of my sources on the alternate media, which I, I interview today on USA Watchdog and have on constantly, because as long as they're going to keep telling us that everything's okay and that we're in recovery, I'm going to keep saying, no, everything's not okay. We're spending trillions of dollars for it to be, quote, unquote, okay. And we're not in a recovery. If we were, we wouldn't have to have phony accounting, uh, you know, 80, 75 billion a month. That's the official number. It's higher than that. It's like a hundred and something billion a month. And we wouldn't have to have 0% interest rates, and we wouldn't have to have, you know, criminals running the financial system. So, 
no, things are not okay. And even Eric Holder said, well, the reason why we don't you know, prosecute people, I'm paraphrasing, this is a direct quote, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, and to asking Congress last year, March, I believe, he said, well, it would imperil the financial system. We, oh, so we, we have to live with this fraud. We have overt fraud, LIBOR rate rigging. We have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, money laundering. I mean, we're supposed to have the NSA, at, you know, uh, you know, keeping us safe. You know, oh, they stopping terrorist attack. Really? How about money laundering for Iran? How about that? You know, a division of Deloitte helped a, a big bank. I believe it was Standard. Uh, you know, basically uh, get around money laundering. Uh, but how about uh, HSBC? You know, and all these other people. You know, uh, laundering money for uh, uh, drug cartels. They got caught laundering money for drug cartels in, uh, or not, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's HSBC, but it may not be. But, I, but big banks that are laundering money for drug cartels in countries on the terror list. I mean, they say Iran is on the terror list, and banks that get caught laundering money and laundering money for cartels. Isn't that a national security issue? Isn't that terrorism? Now, what, what, what is this this terrorism thing? That we're, so, so people that launder money, they just get fined. You know, those aren't, that's not a danger to a national security threat, funneling, you know, helping people launder billions and billions of dollars. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And so, and the, so the long and short of it, I was starting to expose that, and they, they basically came to me one day at CNN and said, uh, here's your 60-day notice. We're not going to renew your contract. What? It was like somebody I had interviews at uh, at MSNBC. I, excuse me at, at at CNBC, at CBS, at Bloomberg, and basically what I what I feel happened. I got blackballed. Nobody wanted to touch me. I knew what I was doing. I didn't get sued. I didn't say anything crazy. I didn't say anything that was uh, that was uh, you know something that I couldn't uh, back up. You know everything I had said about the economy was absolutely true. We weren't uh, that things the banks were in trouble. All of them. That there wasn't subprime mortgages were not to be contained. They were not. Um, you know uh, that everything that I said was going to happen with my sources happened. I said gold and silver was a deal. I mean gold went way up, silver went way up. Now they're they're manipulating, according to Paul Craig Roberts, the former assistant treasury secretary. Uh, so yes. Um, So going back to uh, it was, HS, it was CN- HSBC that got fined one point nine billion money laundering for drug cartels and countries on the terror list. Why they got a, a U.S. office? Why didn't anybody go to jail over that? So you can launder money for terror countries, and that's okay. No, it's not okay. I'm not surprised to hear so about. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure I got that source right, so I didn't damage some bank. You know, I, I'm very careful. I, I don't want to say crazy stuff. But anyway, back back to that. So. I got, in my humble opinion, I got let go because I told the truth and said that things weren't good in the economy and it wasn't looking good. And I think it was uh, not so much it's the new world order or anything like that. Just that's bad for advertisers, bad for business, bad for car sales, bad for appliance sales, bad for, you know, bad for the economy as, oh, you know, fear. But sometimes you should be fearful if, you know, if you're going to be on a railroad track. You know, and if it's really an oncoming train, don't tell me it's a guy with a flashlight and a picnic basket. Tell me it's a train. Yeah, and the government is selling fear, aren't they? Don't they have Homeland Security warning you for potential terrorist threat? And, you know, they have the NSA spying on people. And then if they say they say if we stop spying on people, then we're going to have another Why terrorist attack. Why doesn't the NSA spy on those people laundering money for these banks? Why don't the NSA spying on people who are rigging the LIBOR rate, which is an $800 trillion market? Why isn't the government spying on the people who are rigging the gold market, which is a fraud? Why isn't the government spying on people who uh, you know, have committed all these crimes and all these banker crimes that they're settling with fines? I mean, everything from money laundering to uh, LIBOR rate rigging to mortgage fraud. I mean, this robo-signing was a giant fraud. It wasn't somebody signing something really fast. It was... It was committing forgery and perjury because they didn't have the promissory notes. They didn't have the original notes, so they had to create them. You think you pay for your house over 30 years. You do not. You pay for your house the minute you put your ink on a promissory note. That's how they could securitize the debt and sell it as something worthwhile, is that you pay for the house right there. Now, if you stop paying for the house in installment payments, they take it back. But you, uh, in effect, pay for that house at that moment. And they were recreating documents, forgery, perjury, fraud. That's what the for, that's what robo signing was, and nobody in the mainstream media would say that. It's sad. 
Now, going back to you talking about your career at the mainstream media and how the mainstream media uh, was protect, protecting the U.S. government and the big banks, uh, what's in it for the mainstream media to protect the U.S. government well, and the big I banks? That, uh, why, can't, why can't they be uh, unbiased and do investigative, investigative journalism like well, you did? Well, because I think it's, it's, it's they, were very, they were, CNN was, in my opinion, was very scared of losing advertisers. And uh, I knew a producer working on the on a Ford ignition fire story. It was a bona fide story. It was a real story, uh, and it was uh, Ford cars catching on fire. They had problems with Ford cars. Ford cars have now not now. Ford cars are do not have fire. These are older models. Well, I did a big thing on ignition switches in Ford vehicles in years back. This is a different yet a different story. Uh, with Ford vehicles catching on fire, and you know they were very they held that story for five months until it came it bubbled out somewhere else, and then boom, they put it on uh, real fast, and the producer won an Emmy for it. It was a real story, and they were afraid of losing advertisers. The producer told me they were afraid of losing advertisers, and I think in the greater scheme of things, you know these are people that were really afraid of. You know, they're worried about their quarterly profits. They're worried about their bonuses. They're worried about, and they didn't want anything that would disrupt the boat. Now, the problem is, is that when you don't put out anything real, people quit watching you look at CNN. I mean, they, CNN has become a complete joke. I mean, and when I was there, they did good stuff. It had depleted uranium munici munitions, which is, you know, radioactive uh, waste, and, waste. And when they... Uh, you know, they, they, they basically strip out the fuel, but it's still radioactive. It's still 60 percent, you know, <laughs> radioactive. It's like having depleted uh, gasoline. It's like taking gasoline and pouring 40 uh, percent of it in water and saying, here, drink this. It's depleted. It's still 60 percent gasoline. And so anyway, but I, you know, I, I want to say this, too, because you asked me about starting USA Watchdog. Listen, c CNN uh, not renewing my contract was very difficult for me. I mean, I was lost, man. I was on unemployment. I did save my money. I wasn't crazy. I didn't. I didn't live a high lifestyle. Uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, you know, basically say, "Well, why don't you start your own, you know, a website?" Which I, I luckily trademarked USA Watchdog. You can't trademark USA and Watchdog, but I trademarked USA Watchdog. And a man, I, and I started. But then again, I wasn't, you know, lucky. Lucky. I mean, when I first started USA Watch, I had 10 people read my articles. I, <laughs> I mean, I had nothing. I, you know, I, I would work for hours on an article, and I didn't do video at first. For the first three years, I did only just, I just wrote pieces and linked and, and provided backup and things like that. And, uh, and, but I, you know, I just worked a lot for free, and I had enough money and savings. You know, that was the cash burn. I learned what cash burn means. What cash burn means is, you know, that's the money you burn until you become profitable. Some people never make it past their make it past their cash burn. They don't. They can't become profitable before they run out of cash. In other words, and I, now now I didn't have tons of money like I'm Mr. Moneybags, but I just lived a very Spartan lifestyle, and uh, and it worked. And I find then I started doing videos, and I you know I I leveraged my my good name, which I people liked me, and I you know I treated people squarely. And hey, it came back to me. You know, I had uh, Robert Schiller on. He was, won a Nobel Prize in economics. I've had uh, Paul Craig Roberts on, who was, gave a riveting interview about how we don't have any gold. And some people have written and told me, well, you, we all knew that. No, no, no. We, we, yeah, we in certain circles knew that the government doesn't – or thought the government doesn't have any gold. But this is the awakening of everybody else. And when somebody as formidable as a former assistant treasury secretary who uh, basically invented Reaganomics – uh, says, yeah, I don't think America has any gold. That's a broader awakening. That's that's uh, that's a that's a, a pivotal moment in in finance. That to find that a country the size of the United States, that everybody thought had eight thousand metric tons of gold, you may wake up and find out we don't really have anywhere near that. And maybe beyond yeah, now, I did have a commenter on my site, really smart people on my site, say, well, maybe the United States knows it's going to need its gold and isn't going to let any of it out. They know they're going to have a currency reset. And they know they're going to need it, so uh, we're not shipping anybody any gold anywhere in the world. So I don't know. But the, the fact is, is that things are bad. Things are not good. And they're being papered over. And I, and I don't know how much longer – this is one of the things that I've been told. I don't know how much longer this is going to go on. But back to the starting of the site. So I started USA Watchdog, and I'm so glad I did because you don't – I mean, this is – you, you have to understand how disruptive the technology of the Internet is. 
when I was uh, at CNN or even at ABC, we'd hire a crew, we'd have our sound, sound man, uh, we'd hire a, a, a you know a, 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 a photographer. You know, even if we just wanted to do an interview, we'd have to uh, budget, you know, satellite time. We'd have to get control room time. We'd have to bring the interview in. And even if I wasn't going to travel, you know, that all costs money. Well, now, I mean, I can sit with Skype and I can, you know, book a calendar and I can, hey, at 2 o'clock Eastern time, I would be calling, you know, uh, you know, Singapore. I've interviewed Jim Rogers at, that would be 2 o'clock in the morning. I've interviewed him at 8, 8.30 in the evening. And Jim Rogers, a fame investor, uh, Jim Rogers, who's also a book author. Uh, he's worth three hundred million dollars and knows a lot about global economy. But uh, I, you know, talk to him at eight thirty in the morning, and it's eight thirty at night here. I talk to somebody, you know, uh, people in Toronto that invest billions of dollars, or out in California, or in Costa Rica, or you name it. If they got a decent internet connection, I can bring them in. That is disruptive technology. I have a a hundred dollar uh, HD camera and a twenty nine dollar uh, microphone, and boom, I'm in business. I don't need a satellite. I don't need a book a window of time on the bird. Uh, I don't need to have a $1,500 a day crew on a story. I don't need any of that stuff. I don't, I don't need, uh, you know, union people in my studio. I don't need any of that. Yeah, yeah thanks, to, thanks to the Internet, we have uh, a lot of alternative news network that people can go to because a lot of people are leaving the mainstream media. Over 70% of Americans do not trust the mainstream media anymore. And after, Julie, because of the, what happened prior to the 2008 financial crisis because the mainstream media was not talking about housing bubble. They were dismissing it. Uh, they were not talking about the fraud and the and criminal still activity not. going on in Wall Street. And they're still not. And, you know, in the media and U.S. government and the big bank are all in bed together. And I think America is starting to wake up a little bit. I mean, I'd like to see a little bit more traction in, in that area. But it, it's starting to, they're starting to wake up a little bit. And, and, and all due thanks to the Internet, a lot of people are getting information about, you know, government corruption and crony capitalism that's going on in the economy. Crony capitalism, yes. And that's what a lot of it is. It's, uh, and, they, and I think they think, you know, listen, it's like Paul Craig Roberts was telling me, who is a former, you know, a father of Reaganomics, assistant treasury secretary, uh, you know, at the, at the Department of Treasury, which, you know, when you're an assistant treasury secretary, you're not getting people's dry cleaning. you got 500 people working for you. And, and uh, Paul Craig Roberts, he may have more, I don't know. He may have had more, but he came up with Reaganomics. He was in charge of economic policy. And he told me something very important, very, very telling. And, and this is, should scare the hell out of anybody. And that is simply this. He says, you know, back in my day, we'd, we'd uh, you know, lower interest rates and, and, uh, and they would uh, add some liquidity to the system. We do that for six to nine months. We take our foot off the gas. You know, the economy would come back. Well, they've been doing this since 2008. And they still are doing, you know, all this quantitative easing. It's unlimited. Uh, you know, that's what they tell us. I mean, you know, they say it's uh, se now $75 billion a month, right? Uh, but, you know, who knows what, what it is? I mean, remember back in the, in, when the crisis first happened, you know, about six or eight or nine months after the crisis happened, the Fed said that, well, really, it was only $3.3 .3 trillion they had spent. And then Bernie Sanders, the independent from Vermont, got in the FinReg bill a one-time audit, and we found out, you know what the Fed really spent? $16.2 trillion. How much is that off balance sheet? The real sixteen point two, not three trillion, sixteen trillion. And so, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? Well, and the answer is, well, we don't a lot know. Of, well, I'm hearing a lot of news uh, or gossip and rumors are that the Fed are also providing backdoor bailout to the euro uh, countries as well. So that's not included in the uh, the balance sheet of the Fed. No, I know. I'd say, who knows what they're doing off balance sheet? That's the problem. Who knows what they're doing right. off balance sheet? So, so, I, so you made you made a good point there that you know the mainstream media is starting to become a joke, especially for a CNN, and it's giving material to John Stewart at, at the Daily Show every day because every day I see him making fun of CNN, Fox News, uh, MSNBC. For dang well, doing you know, something, listen, you but know. you know, I want to tell you something. Let me, let me, let me, let's just bring up John Stewart, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Listen, I can write a comedy routine totally based on, you know, what they do is they take facts and they, you know, make funny faces and do a comedy routine. Let's talk about Jamie Dimon, my, the subject of one of my most recent interviews with William Black, Jamie Dimon, and, and, and J.P. Morgan. I mean, if you look at, you know, J Jamie Dimon, and just look at the last three screw-ups of 
Just the last three. Not all their whole width and breadth of their, uh, their, their misfortunes, but just the, what it cost them in fines, restitution, uh, and trading losses. See, we had the London Whale. Jamie Dimon comes out and says, well, it's $2 trillion. And then he goes down to Tampa and he bags himself about a $23 million payday. And, uh, well, we don't find out that it's uh, $2 trillion, It's $6.2 trillion. And somebody may think, well, he must not really know what's going on. No, that's not true. Because I watched the hearings in Congress and sworn testimony of his top lieutenants that said that each of them said that Jamie Dimon was fully aware and in charge of what was going on. And it really turned out to be $6.2 trillion. And that, to me, I'm thinking, so you tell everybody it's $2 trillion, and it really is $6.2 trillion. Now, isn't that making material false statements? I don't know. I'm not a legal scholar, and I'm not an expert in what CEOs should do. But isn't that coming out and making materially, materially false statements? Later, uh, J.P. Morgan, all told, had a, about a, a billion, actually a little more, but let's just call it a billion, a billion. A, 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 uh, a billion dollars in fines added to the 6.2, there's 7.2 trillion. And then we had the mortgage uh, uh, debacle where they mishandled mortgages, which it was mortgage fraud, uh, securities fraud, and they paid 13 billion and it didn't dismiss them from uh, criminal charges. So there's uh, 13 and, and, uh, and 7.2. Uh, there is, uh, what's that, uh, $20.2 billion. And then we add in the Bertie Madoff, which is at least $2.5 billion, and they paid $1.5 billion to settle again criminal charges. Now, they had two cases where there were criminal charges uh, either uh, pending or settling. And you added that off, and what is that? That's $22.7 billion. That's about what it cost to take Dell Computer private. This is just in the last year, actually in the last few months, let's just say the last year, $22.7 billion, how does Jamie Dimon have a job? Uh, wouldn't it be a great John Stewart thing? I mean, he lost this much right. money, and nobody will touch this with a 10-foot pole. You know, Mr. Comedy Man, John Stewart, who people think has more credibility than the three network uh, news anchors, you know, he wouldn't touch this. This is, this, he wouldn't touch this at all. He'll touch the Christy Bridgegate stupid thing. But he wouldn't touch. He wouldn't touch this. And I mean, anyway, William Black, who is a uh, has a PhD in criminology, he is a professor of law, professor of of economics. Uh, he is a former RTC regulator, a top one. And he says that JB, Jamie Di that uh, J P Morgan has uh, presided over the biggest financial crimes in history of the world. I used to mind one of my latest interviews on USA Watchdog. That to me is stunning. Nobody will touch this. The, you know, Jamie Dimon, if he's the king, he's buck naked. He, how can you lose the market cap of uh, what it took to take a Dell computer private and you still have a job? How does he still have a job, let alone criminal charges for the things that, that uh, they have settled with a checkbook? I mean, Bernie Madoff, in the, in the case that they were uh, basically a conduit for the fraud of Bernie Madoff, J.P. Morgan. So were some other banks, too. They weren't alone. But, you know, they got their checkbook out, and it was widely reported that they, they paid $1.7 or so billion to settle criminal charges. Wow, I bet you Bernie Madoff would have liked to have gotten his checkbook out and settled criminal charges. Of course, he'd be paying it off with other people's money. But still, you know, how do you do that? I mean, how do you have a system so corrupt that nobody will even say a word about it? I mean, this is I'm just doing some simple calculations in the last year. Not everything they've done, and people like... Uh, you know, Andrew Sorkin over a deal book, uh, who, oh, you're using him as a pinata. Oh, what's terrible. Oh, J oh people are just picking, picking on him. Anyway, it's, it's sad that, that this is going on, and it's the media, the mainstream media's fault. They're doing a, a, a god-awful job of doing simple things. And the things that I'm doing is, is not that, you know, I mean, if I have the budget to do it, don't you think the New York Times or the Washington Post, or Fox News. Fox News won't touch the, the ongoing banker fraud. They won't touch it. I think a lot of people don't realize is that uh, the Wall Street uh, big banks have the Federal Reserve to rely on if they failed or have losses. They still do. So whatever losses correct. they have, they can go to the Federal Reserve, and, and they can give them all the money they, they want so they can continue to trade and speculate and gamble on in the stock market, 
uh, other CEOs in the other industry don't have that luxury. You're correct. So that's why he ha- he still had the job, and other CEOs, when they fail, they're gone. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. I mean, he, I mean, how much does he need to lose? Evidently, $23, trillion, uh, 23 billion isn't enough. That it, he's, uh, he ain't hit the limit yet before they get rid of him. $23 billion in a year ain't enough for, him to, to, for him, them to get rid of him. Yeah, he's been a terrible CEO for J.P. Morgan. Um, so I want to shift gears here and go back and talk about the, the culture at the, the mainstream okay. media, such, such as CNN and all the other network that you worked for. Uh, were you ever forced to bury or spin a story to, to fit a political agenda? You know, they have Fox News. They take that story and they spin it around to make the conservative look good. And you have MSNBC who take the story and try to spin it and make the liberal, progressive, and Democrat party look good. Uh, were you ever in that situation where you had to do that? Well, I did a story about uh, Coca-Cola. They, they, didn't, they would just kill the thing is what would happen. Or they'd bury it. And they, they didn't, you know, tell me what to write or what to do. But, but I'll tell you, when you do a story, uh, it's kind of like doing a, a little movie. I mean, you've got to get a budget. You've got to get your budget approved. You've got to get airfare and hotel and rental car and, and lay out what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and who's going to be your victim and, and who's going to be your expert and, and uh, you know, how big's the story and you've got to sell it all to your bosses and can you prove it. And, you know, before they, you know, it might cost, some, t- some stories would cost $10,000 to do for three minutes. Uh, you know, uh, five thousand. You know, they, they would cost you by the time you rented a crew. You got a sound guy. You got a photographer. You rented a, you know, uh, you rented a, uh, you know, a equipment package. You uh, you flew somewhere. You had the per diem and meals and editing time and you know, and so I did a story about Coca Cola and there were three different. It was Coca Cola. It was some other. It was it was basically uh, a citrus drinks. And uh, there was a lawsuit by a nonprofit, by a lawyer, and he wasn't really suing for money. He was, he was not. He was uh, suing for to get them to change their formula. And the, the long and short of it is that that, that this certain uh, uh, mixture of uh, citric drinks would produce a benzene because of benzoate. Now they quit, we quit doing this stuff, and it was, uh, you know, it was all the big companies. They were all doing it with their um, with their citrus drinks, the orange drinks. They don't do this anymore. But the but if it would sit by their own you know standards three days and 115 degrees and we did this in the summer and that it would turn to benzoate benzene ben, benzoate benzoate a cheap uh, preservative would turn into benzene and uh, and they had them dead to rights cold busted and I had this story I mean that's a big mass audience appeal story right wouldn't you like to know that if your if your kids were you know sucking down uh, you know uh, uh, soda. And uh, were uh, you know could be exposed to benzene, which there's no safe level. There's no like you can have a little bit. It's like a, a young kid with lead. There's no safe level. They killed that story. I was pissed. They killed it. We had another story about an, an eye doctor about LASIK surgery, which I would never get because of so many things that can go wrong and how they you know they 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 a lot of the surgery is people don't know this is, is experimental. It's classified as experimental. And they killed that story. And actually, the producer was called, and uh, they uh, one of the people said, we're going to get this killed. Well, they did. They got it killed. And so, you know, there was stuff that got killed or put off. Like, for example, I was telling you about the Ford story. It was a, it was a, it was a fire, Ford fire story. And the producer had it nailed dead to rights. They never got sued over it. It broke. It was a national story. You can Google Ford fires. Their cars do not catch on fire now. Okay? This is an older story, older models. And, um, uh, you know, they basically held that story for four or five months, according to the producer. They had she had done a long time earlier, and then it, it broke out in the press, and then they rushed to put it on because, oh, well, after all, you know, so other people are doing it. But they were afraid of, of losing advertising. Ford's a big advertiser, and uh, they were afraid of that. So that's kind of the thing. So did I ever have anybody tell me not yeah, – I did have people shoot down story ideas. I did have people say they didn't want to touch things. I had I had people. I did it. I did a story about depleted uranium munitions and about how it was. Uh, you know, it was a uh, uh, has a half life of four and a half billion years. It uh, when the, they fire the munitions, it's twice as heavy as lead. It it's pyrophoric. In other words, it catches on fire. If it, it you know uh, it, it, when it hits a target, uh, you know it puts a a cloud of radioactive heavy metal dust. Uh, that if you breathe in, would you will never get rid of it uh, around uh, 50 meters around a target. 
uh, you know, a lot of our troops were, were getting exposed to this kind of stuff, caused birth defects. You can pass it along in your DNA. And, uh, you know, I, when I first I, I put that story out, nobody wanted to touch it. It was a real story. And then later on, I, lo and behold, got to do it. But when it aired, it got buried on CNN. Got buried. And it seemed like in this country that anytime someone blows the whistle or tells the truth, they get penalized or punished rather than awarded. Uh, example is, you know, Edward Snowden, uh, when he uh, blew the whistle on the NSA, a lot of Congress wanted him tried and thrown in jail. Some of them want, well, even want to kill him. Uh, and, you know, this guy told the public that there's a government agency out there that's spying on everybody, looking at every phone call, every email that you tr send, even if you're innocent or not, they're looking at everybody. And because of that, we're starting to see a little bit of reform in Congress, even though it's not going to be meaningless and they're not going to do anything to the NSA. But we're seeing people like Edward Snowden get uh, punished and criminalized rather than, you know, awarded and afraid for being a hero for putting this out there. And I go back to a quote from Ron Paul. He said that truth it's treason in an empire of lies. Do you agree yes. with that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do. I do agree with that. And I, I want to go back to uh, the mainstream media and talk about investig investigative journalism. Now, most of the mainstream media don't do this anymore. I see 60 Minutes. They do a decent job no, they of don't. doing that. Uh, well, they, they did have that one story about Congress and their insider insider trading story which uh, I thought was a pretty good piece. Do you agree? No, I don't. I don't agree. They're a day late and a dollar short. They're, way, they're, they're, they're years late and a dollar short. No, I don't agree. No, I don't agree they're doing any kind of a decent job at all. I think they do a crappy job. Seriously, I don't agree. I'm sorry, well, I don't. Well, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, but going back to that subject, investigative investigate journalism, do you think that's dead in the mainstream yes. media? And why, why aren't the mainstream media going back to doing that rather than doing you know, stories on what to happen recently or gossip rumors or showing you know, funny, funny videos cheap. on YouTube? It's something they can put the commercials around. There's no legal. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's fast to do. It's cheap. Uh, there's no... Um, there's no uh, uh, legal downside. There's no lawyering. There's no risk. Uh, uh, they, they, it's just the crap that around the commercials anyway. They don't care. But the problem is, is that uh, you know, the, if you want real news, people are going to find it in other forms, and that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They are going to other other forms, other other places. That's just all there's to it. So yes, I think it's dead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to give you a hard time about 60 minutes, but I used to think they were wonderful. They're not wonderful. Here's one for you. Here's a 60-minute story, okay? Here's a 60-minute story. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, why didn't they do a story about how the robo-signing wasn't robo-signing at all? Because they did do some of this. And hold the bankers responsible for fraud. They sold liar loans. Uh, they, um, they sold liar loans. They packaged liar loans into securities. And when it all blew up, they committed forgery and perjury and fraud on the court. $75 billion a month that the Fed is pumping out to prop up the banks. All right, $35 billion every month. That's almost a half a trillion dollars every month. Here's 60 Minutes. Here's a story for you. Which banks are getting that money? Why is that a taboo question? Which banks are getting $35 billion every month? Which banks? That would be a great story for Wouldn't 60 Minutes. Wouldn't that be a great story? Yeah. Yeah, they're I, never going to do that I agree. Story. The other thing no, no, is, no, no, is that why didn't 60 Minutes connect the dots of all the fraud? You know how they finished their story on, oh, well, we need another bailout fund for the housing market. No, we need to put people in jail. How could they sell liar loans, no doc loans, package liar loans into securities, that's securities fraud, and then have ratings fraud. They rated these things equal to a treasury. That's another fraud. And then when it all blew up, they basically committed forgery and perjury, but they mistitled it by calling it robo-signing. Like, oh, it's really fast, 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 so fast. No, it's forgery and perjury. 
60 Minutes did a terrible job, has done a terrible job. They should be ashamed of themselves. But here's a new one for you. Which banks are getting $35 billion a month? Which ones? Which ones? Are you want me to answer that one? Well, I know what banks are. Okay. You know, but then nobody, why won't they ask that? How, many does, how much does J.P. Morgan get? How much does Wells Fargo get? How much does Citi get? How much does Goldman Sachs get? How much does uh, uh, Morgan Stanley get? How much? Who's getting what? Why don't they do a story about that? Why not? They're a sham, scam, fraud show. Period. The end. How can you miss a story that big? Well, you don't know that's going on? Anyway, go ahead. Your last question. Well, anyway, uh, one final question before I let you go. You made a great point on the mainstream media and, and how they don't cover the, especially the financial crisis. They lie by correctly. omission. Correctly. They don't do it correctly. Well, no, they, and they, they don't they cover don't do everything. They either. lie by omission. They lie. Yeah. Why isn't anybody doing the massive amounts of fraudulent naked short selling in the gold and silver market. We just had the German top finance minister, Elke Koenig, say that the gold rigging is worse than LIBOR. Why don't they go do a story about how Jamie Dimon can keep a job after losing almost $23 billion in a year? Well, I think, I think they're afraid of being labeled a conspiracy nut. That's, that's, that's not a one conspiracy. The, it's a right. fact. It is a fact. That's a, but that's to a them, they think fact. It's a, that is a verifiable fact. They're Writing checks according to widely reported sources that that J, that that J P Morgan people at J P Morgan are settling criminal charges. Why don't they do a story about how the drone murder program uh, is uh, uh, killing Americans and wiping out hundreds of children as collateral damage? Why don't they do a story about that? Children, they're not terrorists. Children. Why don't they do a story? Um, uh, why don't they do a story uh, about uh, why, how nobody in Wall Street has gone to jail? Nobody. Not a single person has gone to jail. Why don't they do a story, if they're talking about national security, how HSBC can launder money for drug cartels and launder money for countries on the terror list and nobody goes to jail? I mean, that's a, that's a national security issue. How, how can an American company, a subsidiary of Deloitte Consulting, help Standard Charter launder money for Iran, hide it for Iran, and nobody goes to jail? How about a story about that, 60 Minutes? How about, hey, hey, how, how about that, you guys? Uh, 60 Minutes, you know, the pillar of journalism? What about those stories? That's not a conspiracy theory. Those are widely reported stories. Why don't they do them? And that's a great point. And there's a lot of stories. They lie by omission. Yeah, they, they lie by omission. They they miss a story that they should have reported they back before two, two, 2008 financial crisis. They they, they just missed no, it. No, they didn't miss it. They didn't miss it. No, you're getting this wrong. They didn't miss it. They omitted it. They lied by omission. You mean I know this, and all the people at 60 Minutes that they don't know this? Come on. I'm smart. Well, I'm that smart. Well, one final question I have for you is that what do you, what do you think the future of the mainstream media is going, to, going toward? Do you think it's going to crumble and a lot of alternative media is going to start taking over and dominate the industry? Or do you think it's, the I think mainstream it's already media... happening, isn't it? I think, and I think you're going to see mainstream media sources buy people, uh, try to buy up alternative media sources. I think you're going to see mainstream media sources buy them and masquerade them as, uh, as uh, you know, alternative media Um you know, they, they used to control the lines of communication. You know, if you, you had to have a cable channel, you had to have a newspaper, you had to have a TV station. Now, uh, as I was saying, there's a destructive technology. You're talking to me. This may get 10,000 views. Well, those are cable numbers. You get 10,000. For some of the cable shows, well, at CNN, you know, if you get, they get 10,000 uh, views on some of their shows. That'd be a good, good half hour. So, you know, yes, I do think that, that the Internet is going to continually change things, but I think the mainstream media is going to try to catch up. I think they're going to try to catch up, but they, they can't catch up unless they do one thing. And you know what that one thing is? They have to tell the truth. They have to regain the public trust by telling the truth. And you cannot lie by omission and act surprised every time there's some major screw-up. And I just laid out just a few stories, or just a few stories that they should be covering. They should be covering how come the uh, you know Division of Homeland Security is buying up all this ammunition. Why are 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 are, are, are police departments getting military style equipment, gun, grenade launchers, and armored vehicles? Why? 
Why are they doing that? I agree with you there. So, uh, I mean, those are real I, stories. That's not cuckoo that, time. That's not, that's not conspiracy theory stuff. That's real stuff that's going on. I mean, Senator Enhoff, I called a friend of mine at CBS, and I said, hey, you know, Senator uh, Enhoff at uh, Oak Island, Oklahoma, I believe, uh, it was on ABC National Radio saying, hey, the, the, the Division of Homeland Security is buying up on all the ammunition to take the ammunition off the shelves. Why don't you guys do a story like that? You know what she told me? And she's a top producer. Oh, nobody has a stomach for stuff like that. You don't have a st- what, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You, 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 you're a, you're a, you're a, a spin agency. You're you're you guys are full of crap. Anyway, go ahead. What? Well, Greg, I, I appreciate you coming on the Wall Street from Entry podcast. If people want to find about um, find your work and your and your podcast and your Interviewed. Where, where can they go? Uh, USAWatchdog.com. Uh, there's a great a couple of last couple of interviews were were really fantastic. There was a uh, William Black, who's a professor of economics, a professor of uh, you know a professor of criminology, law, uh, and he uh, former regular talking about all the fraud of J.P. Morgan and all the banks, just a fraudulent. We just have a fraudulent financial system, and then no recovery is going to happen under a backdrop of fraud. That's A. B. Paul Craig Roberts, who basically. Uh, co-authored a huge article on how America has no gold. Yes, a lot of people thought that America has no gold, but now people like Paul Craig Roberts feel strong, feel the evidence is strong enough to get out there and say it. So when is the rest of the world going to awaken to that fact? Yes, the alternative media has, but that's a big, pivotal turning point. That's a good interview. It's on the site, usawatchdog.com, and it's free. And I, and I recommend people to go to the web vet and check out the interview. That it's very good uh, stuff. Uh, on his site, and very a lot of information and new uh, or different perspective on what's going on in the economy. You can get that on on his website and our website as well. So, Greg, thank you for coming on. Mo, thank you for having me on uh, your nice uh, channel. It's uh, from Wall Street for Main Street. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Wall Street. Yes, Wall Street. Thank you for having me on Wall Street for Main Street. Uh, it's very kind of you to have me on. Thank you for uh, letting me, uh, you know, ramble on.